Hi there, this is Umesh from Perfect, and today we're gonna learn how to use the brand new black and white profiles in Lightroom. And you would be blown away by seeing this new feature if you have not seen this yet. So today we'll make some really cool and expressive black and white conversions using this feature really, really quickly. It's gonna be fun, so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Lightroom and here we have our awesome looking hunk and at the corner as you can see we have the settings which we use to capture this image. And I have been asked this question a lot of times, how to let go of it, how to kind of remove it, it's, it's annoying, it just doesn't go away. All you have to do is press I to remove this thing. Press I again to bring that back, press I again to show more settings and the lens is used and then press I again to let go of it, easy. Now all we have to do, see, the profile right here, this was not there in previous version of Lightroom. Make sure you update your Lightroom to the latest version if you're a Creative Cloud member, okay? Now once you update it, you will see this profile at the top. You wouldn't see it in the previous versions of Lightroom at the top, you would see it bottom somewhere here. There was this, under the calibration, there was this camera profile. It has been moved from here to the top. Okay, now the default profile used to be Adobe Standard, you can still use it, but right now the default profile is Adobe Color, which is supposed to be much more better. As you can see, it has some contrast if I fill in the image. Have a look. The previous one was Adobe Standard, which we used in previous versions. Right now we use Adobe Color. It's much more better. It has some contrast at the same time. It has details in the shadows as well. So. Apart from all of these standard ones, okay, so these are the standard ones, you can choose monochrome and kind of make it black and white. But apart from all of this, you can click on this new button called browse, or you can click on this four squares, click on that one, and voila, have a look at all of those amazing profiles. Now, there are 17 black and white profiles and apart from that, there are tons of them already as well. So there's this camera matching which will match with the profiles at the back of your camera. So when you click a picture, if you go to the settings of your camera, depending upon camera to camera, there are all those profiles, neutral, vivid landscapes. So those are the same thing over here. And then it tries to match the camera. And then there are legacy ones which used to be there before, vintage effects, modern effects, black and white, artistic, you can really go wild with that. And these are not just plain filters. You can work on the image on top of that. How? Let me show you how. So right now we are creating a cool black and white. So you can hover over it. And here's the great part. You can hover over them and it will show you the preview right here. It won't apply the effect, it will show you the preview. That's number one awesome thing about this. And number two awesome thing is, okay, so for example, you go over this, you just see which one you like. Wow, wow, I just really love this level. So I'll just click on it, okay? Now once you click on it, if you think the effect is too intense, number two awesome thing, there's this amount slider. Isn't that awesome? If you think it's too much, you can decrease it. If you want to increase the intensity, you would increase it. Wow, I love the increased intensity, but I would keep it at that. Maybe I'll increase the intensity just a bit, okay? Now you can close it by clicking on the close button. And as you can see, black and white 11 was applied and automatically when you choose a black and white profile, this black and white is selected over there. If you select color, it selects the Adobe color profile. If you select black and white, since you have chosen black and white 11, we have chosen that profile, that profile shows up. You can change it to whatever you like again. So that is the thing. Now on top of this thing, this is not yet done. You can apply whatever you like. I wanna decrease the highlights. Let's just fit it. I just wanna decrease the highlights, maybe increase the contrast a little bit. Okay, just a tad bit. And then if you want, you can just bring up the shadows, but I don't want to bring up the shadows. You want to decrease the blacks you can do that as well okay so it's just like adjustment layers on top of your image you can still work on the image which is under it so if you decrease the black it just it just doesn't go completely black which it should because we have applied the profile to it which is limiting the blacks okay so let's go back the go back not black okay so 
once you're satisfied with the results, once you're satisfied with it, you can move, move it over to Photoshop and we'll do that in a moment. Let's increase the clarity. And one of the most essential things of conversion to black and white is using the black and white mix sliders. And that's also one of the big changes in the new version of Lightroom. Whenever you choose black and white, earlier we used to have this panel called HSO, black and white, and all those things written. But whenever you choose black and white, this converts to just black and white. So if you're in color, have a look. This was HSO, color. Now when you choose black and white, this is just black and white. Earlier we used to have HSO, color, and then black and white. Now it's just black and white. Open that up. It controls the luminosity of different colors. So for example, if we move the red to the right, it will make whatever was red before conversion to black and white brighter. So it will move the red colors, red areas, brighter. So we'll move it a little bit to the right. Orange, we don't want the skin to be a lot brighter. Yellow, we're okay with this thing. Green, just play with this. See the towel, the details are showing up. Then we increase the aqua. Blue, let's increase it. We see the details. Purple, we see even more. This one, okay. Now once you're satisfied with all of this, you can just literally play with this thing. Let's increase the dehaze a little bit to add that crunch to it. And let's decrease the highlights even more. Just like that. Maybe increase the whites a bit. Decrease the highlights even more, okay. Now let's add some sharpness to it. So let's go to the details section and then let's add a ton of sharpness because this is a male portrait. So whenever you're dealing with males, you would add sharpness like 80, 100, something like that. Female portraits, I usually add 50, 60 sharpness. So I would go, this sharpness is great. Let's zoom in one is to one because whenever you're sharpening, make sure you're zoomed in one is to one. And then holding the Alt or Option, increase the radius. Don't increase too much at, to the point where you see the halo effect around the edge. If the radius is too much, have a look around the edge over here. It will show you a halo effect when you hold the Alt key or the Option key. Decrease it all the way to the left and increase it gradually. Just when you begin to see the halo effect, stop. So for me, that area would be 1.0, 1.1 is fine. Now similarly, the details hold the Alt key or the Option key. Decrease it all the way to the left and gradually increase it. If you increase it too much, you'll see a lot of noise. So let's keep it around this value and we don't need to mask it in this case and it works pretty much fine. Okay, everything is done. Once you have done all the settings, we can move it to Photoshop. Right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 or whatever version you might be using. So here we are in Photoshop with the image and as you can see in the background, there are a lot of drapes which is a little distracting and we can remove them by simply unlocking the background layer. Okay, so unlock the background layer. Let's create a solid color adjustment layer for the background. Hit OK. Take it down. Okay, take it beneath it. Double click on the symbol and then simply let's sample the darkest color. It's not sampling. Fine. Make sure sample is selected to all layers. Okay, hit OK because this layer is at the top of the solid color adjustment layer. So when we were sampling, current and below was selected. So below it, there was nothing. This layer was above it. So we had to select all layers and then we sampled it. Okay, now select this one, simply create a mask. Take the brush, you can decrease the flow to somewhere around 20% or 30% and take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, black hides, white shows up. Right now it's completely white. The whole of the layer is showing up. We will select the mask and paint some areas in black, just like so. Okay. Now you can take some time to do it. Like right? I'm doing it really, really fast. Zoom in and let's do it. You can leave some of that to have that texture around him. That's totally your take. Now, once you're done with it, what you can also do, I painted a little extra. So let's paint this area in white. Okay, there we go. Now let's add some effects. So we can add simply a color lookup table. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose color lookup. And we can try tons of them. Just click on one of them and using the mouse, just scroll to see which one looks good for your image. Wow, that looks really amazing. So you can just scroll it and really create 
a really nice effect with this thing. Wow, I like the golden effect as well. So you can try in different ones. Wow, crisp winter looks awesome. You can also try in different blend modes. You can change the blend modes to something like soft light. See what that does. Maybe if it's too much, you would decrease the opacity a little bit. I think I like the normal one and I would increase the opacity and this looks like a movie poster. Awesome. So right now I will move back to this one and I will erase this area as well. It's kind of a little, a little distracting. Let's erase this. And you can take as much time as you want. And there we have our image ready. So that's how to very easily convert that into black and white by using those amazing profiles in Lightroom. All you have to do, now once you are in Lightroom, let me just open that back again. Update your Lightroom. Okay, now once you update your Lightroom, at the top you will see profiles. Now once you select a profile which is based on LUT, lookup tables, or in other words, once you select a fancy profile from the menu, you will see this amount slider. You can use that to intensify or de-intensify the effect. And then you can play over the profile. Isn't that awesome? And once you're done, you can leave it to that or move it to Photoshop to really go all into that image. So that's all for this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Thank you so much for watching.